Artificial intelligence sets the stage for a new era of solutions to be made with computers. It allows us to solve problems that we could not have imagined in the past. It's a technology with massive potential and it's also very confusing. To clear up some of the confusion, I decided to make this video where I answer the most popular AI questions. Who invented artificial intelligence and where? The ideas about artificial intelligence evolved through centuries starting with Greek myths about intelligent robots, but AI as we know it today only emerged in 1955. The term was coined by Alan Turing, Marvin Minsky, Alan Newell, Herbert A. Simon, and John McCarthy. Alan Turing, famous for his Turing machine and working on deciphering the German Enigma code, Marvin Minsky's inventions include the first head-mounted graphical display and the confocal microscope. Alan Newell worked on two of the earliest AI programs, the Logic Theory Machine and the General Problem Solver. Herbert A. Simon proposed a preferential attachment mechanism to explain power law distributions. John McCarthy created a programming language Lisp, invented garbage collection, and organized the Dartmouth Conference where artificial intelligence was started as a field. How does artificial intelligence work? Artificial intelligence is an all-encompassing term, which covers a myriad of different intelligent algorithms, of which the most popular is the neural network. Neural networks are built up by neurons. You can imagine them as a small computer chip that gets an input and based on some formula, gives out some output. Let's say for all numbers greater than 10, the neuron gives out 0, and for all numbers less than 10, it gives out 1. So this could be an example of we have the data for rainy days, and we are naively predicting forest fires. If there were less than 10 rainy days this year, we predict a forest fire, and give out the output of 1. If more than 10, then a forest fire is unlikely, and the output is 0. Now with more complex neural networks, there are many, many layers of such neurons that allow making extremely complex predictions. In that same example, we could have data for the humidity, temperature, amount of people that visited the forest, amount of thunderstorms, etc. All these elements would trigger different neurons, and based on their outputs we could make better predictions. As a more concrete example of a neural network application, Let's take an image, which is a collection of pixel information that can be given as input into a massive neural network. Let's say it was an image of a cat. The neural network is trained to look for different characteristics. If it finds a cluster of pixels that represent ears, it can already give out a prediction that this is some sort of animal. If it recognizes eyes, paws, etc., other different clusters light up and give the prediction that an image of a cat has been given as an input. The learning of a neural network works by feeding a lot of inputs into the neural net and giving the output. By going through multiple iterations, the model constantly adjusts its neurons. If we find ears in the picture, we can be this much confident that this is a cat. If it finds ears, paws, nose, if it finds edges, shapes, the right colors, that increases the quality of the prediction. Basically, if we had that single neuron that gives a value based on a single data of information, in huge neural networks, millions of neurons are given inputs. They are also adjusted based on training, and outputs are being generated that can be generalized into a prediction. This is the basic gist of how neural networks work. Are artificial intelligence and machine learning the same? These terms can be easily confused, as a lot of the time it seems they are being used interchangeably, but in short, artificial intelligence is the broad, all-encompassing term for different algorithms that do all kinds of tasks. While machine learning is a more narrow term, which focuses on training different models with data to do predictions. For example, face recognition. Why artificial intelligence is important? When programming computers, we usually have a very limited set of tools, if statements, 
If something is true, do execute this branch. If not, execute another branch. For loops to execute a branch for a number of times and all the math operations. But when given a task to recognize an image, we can't really write a simple algorithm that would work. We can't have an if statement for each pixel. So for these kinds of tasks, we need sophisticated artificial intelligence algorithms. All in all, AI is bringing computer science to a new level, where we are able to solve new kinds of problems that traditionally would be unsolvable. All that allows computers to automate more and more tasks and expand their capabilities. Still, there is a ceiling at which AI can progress further. But I believe AI is going to set the stage for general artificial intelligence as it's going to be a whole new paradigm of a new era of problem solving. Will artificial intelligence take over jobs? Yes, it will. Just imagine all the drivers replaced with self-driving cars and trucks. It will take a while, but it will happen. And there's going to be a bunch of fields that AI will disrupt. But this has happened throughout history time after time. Is it going to be different this time? And it will be notoriously difficult to transition to new jobs? Time will tell. Will artificial intelligence replace doctors? Well, this is quite unlikely, at least for several more decades. AI might help doctors do their job. Giving care is also a very compassionate job. But until they will be fully replaced, if at all, is going to take a long, long time. Will artificial intelligence replace radiologists? Radiologists are medical doctors that specialize in diagnosing and treating injuries and diseases using medical imaging procedures such as x-rays, MRIs, ultrasound. This is a field where AI can shine as it is exceptionally great at finding patterns. Now, it's still far from replacing doctors, but it's definitely a field that will get automated first. What programming language is used to code artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence can be programmed in any language. But the community has formed mainly around Python, which has the cutting-edge libraries for artificial intelligence, like TensorFlow, Keras, Tianus, PyTorch, NumPy, Pandas, etc. And all the courses that you will find online will use Python. So, if you're interested in AI, learn to code with Python. How artificial intelligence will change the world? It is already transforming the world. We are experiencing its effects every time we shop on Amazon and get recommended products to buy, when we get recommendations on YouTube, when we talk with our phones, or when the government in China uses face recognition to track people. These unpleasant ways of how AI jumps into our lives will emerge even more in the future. How much do artificial intelligence programmers, engineers and scientists make? The AI field is booming, and there is huge demand for talent. Salaries for general programmers are already high, but if you are also an AI programmer, you can expect to earn from 150,000 per year to 300,000 and more. There have been reports of companies paying up to a million dollars a year in salary for an AI scientist. Obviously, this is atypical, but if you are good at what you do, then you can definitely expect a very high salary. What artificial intelligence can do? Artificial intelligence can recognize objects, your face, what you're saying, it can create pictures, sounds, music, text, it can even hold a conversation. It can do miraculous things, but even though it seems crazy, still we are far away from combining all these intelligent tasks into a thing that could do all of them and adapt to changing environments. Where artificial intelligence is used? Artificial intelligence is used throughout many different fields. Chatbot and virtual assistant tech are solely based on AI language algorithms. Autonomous flying, self-driving cars and autonomous vehicles are all powered by AI. 
Medical image analysis is a field of healthcare where AI is used. Warehousing, logistics, inventory management are all fields where AI is utilized. Shopping, social media, retail, fashion uses AI. Security and surveillance, manufacturing and production, all these fields utilize AI. Will artificial intelligence surpass human intelligence? AI is really good when it is given a task and it has clear-cut rules that can be evaluated as success or a failure. For example, chess. AI can easily learn the moves and start training, as winning a match means it has done good and should do more of what worked, and if it loses, it should do less of that. Then train for millions and millions of times and you have the best chess player where no human can compete. But what if there is no way to know how to win, and there is no clear-cut task at hand? Then you can't really train the AI, and that's the main idea for calling it artificial. Though the goal is to create general artificial intelligence, an algorithm that can quickly learn to recognize images and just as well be used to understand speech, then to talk and create music or art and find the answers to physics and math problems. Once we have that, it will be a new era for humanity, and I think we will be able to clearly see that our intelligence will be surpassed. What artificial intelligence can't do? Well, the main thing that AI can't do is to adapt to different tasks. If it learns to drive a car, the same AI won't be creating deep fakes, as it requires a different kind of training. But in the future, it will emerge up into general AI. Why artificial intelligence can be dangerous? It's very speculative and you can think of different scenarios, some more likely than others. The first instinct is to think about general AI escaping into the internet, building itself a robot army and taking over the world. It's fun to make movies or write books about such scenarios, but honestly, I doubt such a scenario could unfold. What concerns me right now is how AI is used in surveillance of people in China, where cameras can identify you and track whenever you're doing something wrong. Their whole social credit system is very alarming and is a threat to human rights right now. IBM reported that they are shutting off their facial recognition services as they don't align with their values. In my previous video, I talked about deepfakes and how AI can recreate the voice of a person, how it can put your face into video footage, and though I haven't heard any such attack that has caused damage, it doesn't take much imagination how this could work out. As AI evolves and we figure out more fields of application, more threats will arise that aren't as sexy as killer robots, yet very disruptive. How many companies use artificial intelligence? According to a survey in 2018, 61% of businesses have implemented AI technology in their businesses. When I'm recording this video, it's already 2020. What a year. And the numbers should be higher. I can only guess how much, but the thing is, some businesses might not even recognize that they are using AI. If they have an online shop and a chatbot helping with customer support, well, that's AI right there. Even though it's not too obvious and doesn't require an AI engineer to implement it. So maybe the numbers are higher than reported in surveys. Can artificial intelligence be creative? Well, it depends on how you define creativity. If you would define it as being able to do things outside the realms, it was trained to operate, then most likely no. But if you would define it as thinking outside the box and finding all the possible ways of winning, then it's definitely creative. To me, the best illustration of creativity is this video by Two Minute Papers, where AI was playing against AI, a virtual game of hide and seek. And honestly, the results are quite amazing as they discovered plenty of outside-the-box ways how to win the game. For example, fly off the map, close out themselves, block out the seekers, and so forth. Is this creative? Well, I will leave it to you to decide.
How often do we use artificial intelligence? If you are using your phone and computer daily, then you are most likely using some sort of artificial intelligence-based technology. If you aren't using voice recognition, then you might be using your camera that uses AI filters. If you don't do that, then you might be doing Google searches, or shopping on Amazon, or a ton of other things that use AI. What artificial intelligence companies to invest in? If you think artificial intelligence will change the world, then naturally you want to be a part of it and invest. Though pure AI companies that only work on AI research and products are quite rare. But pretty much all the tech giants are using AI to improve their products. Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Netflix, Apple, IBM, also companies like AMD and NVIDIA are building the hardware that powers artificial intelligence. And there are also startups that you could find to invest in, but that's very risky. How artificial intelligence is changing drug discovery? Drug discovery involves processing a lot of data, doing research, analyzing previous papers, etc. Coincidentally, AI is extremely good at analyzing data, and the researchers are using AI to speed up the process and find new links between data that can lead to new discoveries. Where can you learn artificial intelligence? Universities have the best cutting-edge courses on artificial intelligence, so you either should take a university course or look for some free university material online. Before you dive in, you should be familiar with programming. In courses, you are most likely to find code examples in Python. If you want to go deep and really understand the topic, then calculus will also be very important. You can also find a lot of random material here and there, but I would suggest to go through a more structured approach and only reach for different material if you want something to be explained in a different way to better understand it. So there you have it, the most popular AI questions answered. Though, you still might have more. If so, then leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Maybe I'll even do a part 2.